Hey yo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J show and let's talk about Spongebob Season 9. For the second time this month, this time you can not only thank me, but also the Spongebob Amino for partnering with me for this sponsored review. The Spongebob Amino is a social network completely dedicated to Spongebob fans. Amino, unlike other social medias, actually is ran by passionate and responsible members of whatever community it is. Amino is great for people who like to type out long blog posts that that might become featured on the front page, or those who simply want to have a quick conversation about the latest episode. On the app, Fans can connect through public chats, vote on favorite characters or episodes. Members can also write blogs, take quizzes, and connect with a community of like-minded people. But it's no echo chamber, I can highly assure you of that. Sometimes you will find challenging opinions there. So make sure to download the Amino app with the links in the description below, because without them, this review probably wouldn't be out as early as it is. Now I've talked about Season 9 of Spongebob at least about 5 times. You have my Fishbowl review, which is negative my Squid Baby How I'd Write which is negative, my Married to Money segment on my Mega Verses which was negative, my Little Yellow Book segment in my Other Verses which was negative, and my recent Goodbye Krabby Patty review which was also negative. You know what? Have I been harsh on Season 9? Yeah if you want to say. Do I dislike Season 9? Not at all. I typically talk about shows in a negative review or two that I actually like in general, like Back at the Barnyard or Gumball. It's generally because although I like the show, and most likely a lot of episodes can show why, there's usually a few that really miss the mark, and that's more interesting to talk about, at least first, before I go into the episodes that I do like. However, this is not the case with Season 9 of Spongebob. Call it Law of the Odds. Although I've reviewed about 20 or so episodes of Spongebob on my channel, I guess I wasn't tracking that all of my reviews from season 9 were negative. So let's change that with this review of Patrick the Game. And you know what? I've been super hard on Patrick and the fishbowl was a pretty bad episode. Combine that with yours, mine, and mine and yeah, based off of my channel, I haven't said a lot of good things about the guy. But let's change that here. So we start off with Spongebob and Patrick playing Certified Accountant, the board game that requires long math. At first I thought this was a jab at Monopoly but eh too vague. They decide to spice it up by running with a spreadsheet instead of running a spreadsheet, if you know what I mean. They end up annoying Squidward. Side note, why did Squidward willingly set up his lawn chair next to Spongebob and Patrick, not knowing that they would end up this way? It's almost as if he liked it, and was subtly setting up for it? <gasps> you think that games grow on trees? Doesn't everything grow on trees? No, you ninny. Somebody makes them. Makes them? There is an important distinction to be made about Squidward that will actually shock you. Not the whole number five on our list would shock you type of shock you, but more like how did the writers not think about this very small but important distinction type of shock you. Squidward, although snobby and rude, decides to go along with Patrick in a montage of poorly thought out games that end up failing. In fact, this entire opening scene and montage is so well done that when the episode is over, I kind of wanted to watch it again. A great opener can really do that for you. Patrick, although stupid in a kind of funny way, made tons of sense here with the games. I do like how Squidward is enjoying his day and not being hurt, at least not yet, for being a snob, letting it all build up. Plus, since he was the main critic of Patrick making a game, it does make sense for Patrick to want to prove himself to Squidward more than with Spongebob. Also, animation error, when the bubble transition starts, for a small but noticeable moment we see the stuff written on the notepad change. Mind you, I rewatched this episode on double speed and still saw it, so imagine the people viewing it on their screens at normal speed. Patrick consults Sandy on what to do because Sandy is actually being used here correctly, although I will say... Are they trying to make Sandy into a scientist who only does things with nuts? Because there's tons of episodes where she's made more inventions that had nothing to do with that. I guess I should be looking forward to more of this? She tells Patrick that if he wants to develop a good board game, then he must study the great board games of Bikini Bottom and realize the elements needed to create a good board game. Or in Patrick's logic, actually mash up every board game until you get a decent result. You know, this episode is actually looking pretty good so far. Wait, why is there lightning? All he's doing is gluing and cutting and- Oh my god, holy crap, what was that? What was that face? Wait, go back. 
Well, actually, based off of experience, I know in SpongeBob this is not the worst face to be drawn with such detail. But hey, considering that they've been doing this since episodes like Just One Bite, I don't think it's too bad here. Actually, this game looks like it could be pretty amazing, but I wouldn't trust Nickelodeon to give this out in a physical condition. They'd probably think because all kids are on their smartphones at a period in a day to make virtual dice and cards, where you roll it and you have to pay a microtransaction to see what number you get. We have more Squidward snarky attitude, raising a somewhat good point about Patrick making pointless games. But because of his research, this game isn't like the others. Every game that Patrick has invented is more pointless and boring than the last. This time he did research. We haven't started and I'm already bored. I do want to highlight that Squidward is still very snarky. However, SpongeBob and more importantly Patrick are ignoring it. Plus Squidward, at least on the surface, willingly went on with all of this. He isn't running away. He isn't being dragged to a spot where he doesn't want to be, he's just grumpy and snarky instead of scared and held hostage. You'd think that'd be a very easy distinction to make in a children's show. We get some more scenes of them playing the game with tons of board game cliches which aren't dull or stale here. Like I say all the time, just because it's cliche doesn't mean it doesn't work, but just because it works doesn't mean it's not cliche. They do reference a lot of other games within this episode, and I'll leave you guys to spot some. But Squidward rolls the dice after speeding up not only Spongebob, but Patrick again, and instead of trying to have fun, he goes to jail. Well, you don't get to roll when you're in jail. Well, what do I do to get out of jail? You have to roll a six. Hey! You can't roll a dice when you're in jail! Yeah, play by the rules. Well, if the only way to get out of jail is to roll a six, and I can't roll if I'm in jail, just how am I supposed to get out of jail? <laughs> Surprisingly, another important distinction that this episode has that other episodes don't have is that Patrick actually fixes the situation rather than ruining it some more. His fix, remember this, is that someone has to say his name in order to get out of jail. Look at Cephalopod Lodge. He doesn't fix the situation there. We have another gag that is really close to Operation, and Squidward complains some more. It's actually quite interesting that Squidward both wants to play and not want to play at the same time. He didn't want to play at first, but at the same time, he's complaining about getting out of jail, which is in the game, so he does want to play? I guess you can say he wanted to get through the game as fast as he could, but wouldn't the game go faster if he was in jail and essentially couldn't move for the rest of the game? I know I'm adding more thoughts to this game than a starfish who made it, whose rulebook for this game would probably have less words in it than this review. That's it! I've had enough! Come on, Squidward! Come on, Squidward! Squidward! Squidward. Wait, how did he get out of jail? Squidward made us say his name. That was a smart move, Squidward! Huh? Uh. Now you roll after me! That is what separates this episode from the rest. You see, tons of episodes have Squidward uncomfortable, miserable, or flat out scared of what is our lovable protagonist, quote unquote. Squidward doesn't really give off the vibe of being uncomfortable. At least here, he isn't being held against his will, or even worse, already in his house being tormented. Now I do want to at least say, to those who think Squidward shouldn't be tortured or bothered at all, this is his character. He was designed to be snarky and get his just desserts if he went too far, or just in general. If you think this is a new thing in post-movie Spongebob for Squidward to be beaten down, I highly suggest you guys check out Snowball Effect. And for the other side who say that they have went too far in post-movie, I totally agree, but here, it really isn't too bad. Here, like in the fishbowl, he seems to be reacting like a cartoon character should. This is why the episode is so great to me. You know, besides the already solid foundation, funny jokes, and board game references. Squidward seems to be happy sitting back down, as you say, and things seem to be going fine until he unfortunately has to go back to jail and really quits this time. He does call out Patrick for making up the rules as he goes on, multiple times during the gameplay, before Squidward goes outside. Blowing up again, this time breaking Patrick's game and him in a way. I think. And he gets arrested, Mrs. Puff style, being dragged off, happy at first, but with a repeat gag that was actually out of the blue, he doesn't want to be in jail anymore, begging for someone to say his name. It actually does come out of nowhere, but in a good way. And you actually don't feel like you watch an 11 minute episode, wanting more. And that was Patrick 
the game. This episode really defines what a good Patrick episode should be at the fundamentals, going from season 9b and forward. I truly enjoy how he was able to not become unlikable throughout the entire episode. Although he was slow, he showed like in pre-movie Spongebob, and a few good episodes after, that he's perfectly capable of not getting too ignorant or arrogant. In fact, here, I think it was a great balance, with a few unexpected turns that I didn't forget to mention. I did notice that Sandy is a bit more brute here, kind of like Bubby from Flapjack, or Gloria from Madagascar. She does feel kind of like the glue that a Spongebob, Squidward, and Patrick dynamic might need in order for this to work, and not blow over into bad territory. Maybe it's because the writers haven't written her to be dumb yet, which is probably lucky because if it isn't Texas, a corner science, you'd essentially be getting the same Sandy. And here, she was kind of like that in the beginning, but they made sure not to constantly remind us of those three things right after. Squidward seemed to have consent and never felt uncomfortable. Sure, he was mad, but beyond the boundaries of what a butt monkey like him would have had to go through, I feel like here, he's fine. And who knows? Maybe they could have even gone farther because Squidward reacts like a cartoon character should and not how a real person would. Overall, this episode is great and I do hope I can get more season nine positive reviews out. So like my titling was before in the fishbowl, why Patrick why? Because Patrick was so outstanding here. I feel like there's no better way to express my gratitude than to name this video. Thank you, Patrick, thank you. Make sure to follow me at the Alpha J Show on Twitter or join my public discord. I'm really active on both, and if you have a question or 30, make sure to ask there, or in the comments below. And also make sure to check out Amino guys, it's actually really good, and you can check it out with the links down below. Another one of these videos will be coming out later this month, full disclosure. My question to you guys, what do you think about this episode or season 9 or season 9b? in general. Was I too harsh in the past? Let me know. Is there another episode you think I should give another watch for possibly another future positive review? Let me know in a request video in the description. Not this comment section here, but in that video, the one with this thumbnail on the screen. It's also in the card, so please make sure to send it there because I would totally be down to do another season 9 review. If you really like this video, I highly suggest watching my first Spongebob season 9 review, which was the little yellow book in a April Fool Fools versus with Fools in April from Spongebob, or my Spongebob playlist in general. Make sure to subscribe and feel free to consider my Patreon. As always, I hope your time is well spent, and Alpha out.